I just got my new MacBook Pro and I haven't installed anything on it yet. Uh, I have just uh, booted it up and set up the date and time and that kind of stuff and uh, just installed one program in order to do the screen recording on it. But other than that, I haven't touched it uh, yet. And I was thinking that we could together in this video install everything I need for my development environment. So we will set it up from scratch to the point where I can actually do some coding. And I think this will be quite interesting because let's be honest, uh, you don't do this kind of stuff every day, rather not even every year, at least for me. So there is a bunch of stuff that I'm sure I won't remember and some simple stuff that I need to Google and figure out how to do. But uh, it will be interesting to see what it actually takes to get the dev environment up and running and to actually get it to a point where we can start coding. So I've made a little bit of a list myself what to install, but I'm sure there will be some stuff that I forgot. And uh, once we go through it, we will see that, oh, we need that, that thing too. So you get to see the process as I go through it. And I'm sure there will be some mistakes and problems along the way, but hey, let's figure them out and be wiser afterwards. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that I will do is actually modify this dock over here. So this is pretty much a Mac specific thing, but uh, I don't like it having too much stuff. And I use the spotlight for almost always when I open up programs. So I don't really need this dock. So let's actually remove a bunch of stuff from here. Okay, so now it's much cleaner. And next, let's actually make this a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna right click it and dock preferences. And from here, make the size a little bit smaller like this. And then I'm also gonna check this box over here. So automatically hide and show the dock. So uh, because I don't use it much, I don't need to see it all the time. So that's good for me. And when I want to see it, I'll just take my mouse to the bottom and it's visible. Okay, now that that's good, let's start by installing Chrome. So I'll Google it and download and install that because I use Chrome for all my web development. I really like the dev tools on Chrome and uh, overall I like using Chrome. So that's the browser we will install. Once it's downloaded, I open it up and installed it. Okay, now it should be installed. So let's open it up over there. <clears throat> okay, now it's installed. Great. So next up, what we will install is something called Alfred. I'm just going to Google it and right here. So I'm going to click download. So this Alfred is kind of replacement for the spotlight search. And as I mentioned earlier, I use the spotlight search or actually Alfred to uh, open up any application I need. So I never go and click on shortcuts. I always just open up the search and type it in and open it from there. So let's install that. Looks like it downloaded. Great. Let's open it up. So over here. And for now, I'm just gonna skip the setup and get started. And what I'm actually gonna do is uh, use the hotkey command uh, space for the Alfred. So the default spotlight hotkey. And in order to do that, I think I need to, yeah, I need to uh, unbind that hotkey from the spotlight. So let me do that. Like that. And now I think I can bind it over here. Great. Okay, so command space opens up the Alfred. So now I can just close this. And if we press command shift, uh, we get the Alfred search. And that's what I use for everything. So for example, if I want to open, let's say finder, I can just type in finder, open it up from there. So that's working great. Next thing I will install is one password. And this is not so much related to uh, development or 
setting up the dev environment, but I use this one password password manager as my password manager. So uh, I need to install it on this computer also so I can log in to my accounts. So let's download and install it. Okay, looks like it's installed. Now I will still uh, log into it. So just give me a second. Okay, now I logged in and it's installed. So I can access my passwords on this computer also. Great. Next thing I will install is iTerm. And this is a terminal that I use instead of the default one in Mac. So let's go ahead and download it and install it. And as we open it, looks like it wants to install the common light developer tools. So that's something we also want to install. So let's do that. We can do it right here. And yeah, so this might take some time. So I'll get back to you when this is installed. All right, so finally it's installed. That took a while. But now we have the iTerm open over here. So let's configure it a little bit. So I'm gonna go to the item 2 and preferences. And from here, what I want to do is just to maybe change that cursor over there and add a little bit of opacity. So let's try going to preferences and actually the profiles. Okay, so in the text tab, I'm actually gonna use the uh, underline cursor as you see there, and also add a blinking cursor. So it should blink when the window is active. Great. Then the opacity. Okay, so it's in the window tab. It took me a little while to find it. So over here, the transparency, I think we will use that. So for me, that looks good. I like to have it a little bit transparent so I see what's behind it. And I actually also tested out some color presets for the terminal, but uh, I think I'm gonna just stick with the uh, default ones right now. And maybe I'll try the presets and different kind of uh, theme or profile for this item later on. But for now, I think this is good for us. And one more thing I want to do is to define the default size for a new window in iTerm. So if I open up a new window, we can see it it's uh, this size and I actually want it to be more like uh, this. So let's do that. So right here we have the setting for new windows. I think let's try 90 and rows something like 30. Let's see how that looks. Okay, I think the 80 was good for that and or actually we want to have like more columns and the rows were good. So let's try that. Yeah, that looks good now. So let's go with that. So I think the item is now configured. And next what we want to install is, let me just look a little bit. Yeah. So I think we already have a git. Yeah, we got the git from installing those uh, command line developer tools or whatever it was that took a little while. So next up, let's actually install the git tower. So this is the git client I use. I sometimes use command line for some simple tasks, but uh, like 99% of the time, I will use this uh, git tower as my git client. So for this, uh, let's get started. So it right away opens up the download and let's wait for it and then install it. Okay, it should be installed. So let's open it up. And I actually have a license already, but I think I'm just gonna for now, just use the trial and go from there. So for these, uh, I think we don't have to modify those. Then the service accounts, let's just leave them as is and uh, start tower. 
So right here in tower, we can click the plus sign and clone git repository and paste in the URL and clone it. Great, now we can see it over here and we can open it up and see everything that's inside of it. So looks like uh, tower is working correctly. So next I think we need to install node. So let me just check it out. So yeah, node is not installed by default. And for this, I actually am gonna Google it because I don't remember it. And I think we should use something called NVM for easy, uh, easy changing between the node versions. So let's check it out. All right, so I did a little bit of research and uh, as I said, I think we want to install the NVM because with that we can use different node versions with ease. So I have the NVM GitHub repo open and right here they have the installing uh, instructions. So I'm just gonna follow these up and see if I can get node and NVM installed. And just uh, to clarify, so the NVM is a script or program that enables you to switch between different node versions. So that's not actually node that you're installing, but a script that installs uh, different versions of node and then enables you to switch between them. So let me just uh, follow these instructions and uh, try to install it. Okay, great. So looks like the NVM was installed successfully. And one thing I want to show you, so what I did was just copy this line to my terminal and then uh, run it and it actually said that it couldn't find the uh, bash file or it's uh, one of these files over here. So what I did was just uh, as they suggest over here, uh, right here. So I created this file and then ran the installation script again and that was it. It was working right away. Uh, so now we have the NVM installed, but if we type in node-v, we still don't have node installed. So let's install that. And I think they had instructions over here. So yeah, usage. So uh, in order to install the latest version of node, we can just run the NVM install node. So let's do that. So once that's run, looks like we have the node installed. So now if we run node as we, we get the node installed. Great. So now that we have uh, node installed, I think it's time to install VS Code. So let's do that. Let's open it up. Okay, looks good. And I'm gonna try to open up the repo we cloned. So let me do that right here. And we have the repo open right here. Great. And one thing I'm actually going to do right away is change the theme for VS Code. So I'll open up the extensions and search for Aura. I actually made a video about this theme a while back. So check that out if you want to learn more about this. But uh, this is the theme, I use the Aura theme and let's just install it and I'm gonna go with Aura Dark. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, this, this is good. All right, so now we have Visual Studio Code installed. So last thing I think we want to do is uh, install Postman. So let's do that. So Postman is a tool that enables you to make API requests. And this is something I use every day. So that's what we want to install next. So let's see. Okay, so right here, I'll select the Mac Apple chip. So let's download it and then install it. All right, should be installed. So let's see. Okay, uh, Alfred is not yet finding it, so let's open it up from the applications folder. I think it will 
find it after we open it up for the first time. All right, so Postman is installed. And one thing I will do right away is just to set the theme to dark. Okay, great. I think that's pretty much it that we need for now to install. So now we have everything installed in order for us to start developing with our new MacBook Pro. Uh, and I'm sure there is still some things that I need to configure or figure out that didn't come up right here. So some, some things that will pop up when I actually start to code. But I think pretty much like all the heavy lifting is done right now. And there is only like some minor tweaks and configurations left for me to do. But yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out. And I'll see you in the next one.